So as a young kid, I can remember a very large backpack like that on my back every day. I carried a lot of weight. I had quite a challenging home life. Two parents with mental health issues. My dad was a drug addict. My mum had severe OCD and anxiety and eating disorder. So I always had a lot on my mind, a lot of anxiety and fear and kind of um, uncertainty of like what I was walking into when I went home that night. I think for me, the most challenging part of being a kid was my dad's constant relapses. You know, when, when you're living with an addict, it's like everything's fine, you're all together as a family, he's clean, you know, and then suddenly it's like the wheels just fall off and he's gone and he disappeared for months on end. Um, and my dad used to say, like, I'm just popping around the, sh you know, the corner and shop to get some milk and he'd be gone for weeks. So that fear of like not knowing if he was coming back always made me feel like I was living on like an unstable territory. Um, and so, yeah, it was quite a tough, tough place to be, but I overcame it. You know, I'm here today and I, I've got a great relationship with my parents today. But yeah, as a kid, definitely had me acting up at school. You know, I had a lot of behavioural issues. I couldn't focus. I couldn't sit still. I needed someone to ask what was going on, but I think it was an invisible backpack, you know, no one was asking me. There's a photo of me here when I'm about seven years old um, in my little karate outfit, white belt, so I obviously just started there. And I think my mum and dad sent me to karate because I was such a, I was super hyperactive, so much energy. And I think sending me there like to release some of that and like be a bit physical was really good for me. I just wasn't a kid that could sit still. I couldn't sit still. I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. But when I exercised, I realized that channeled me like it was a positive use of my energy. And I felt so much calmer afterwards. I slept better. I um, was just a kind of little happy little boy, I think, when I was moving my body. So I've not been someone who's bottled things up. I actually think physical exertion and exercise is like the most powerful thing for me. I think school was like my safe place, like because it was like where I was around friends and, you know, there wasn't chaos. And so although I found it really difficult in some subjects, I couldn't sit still you know, maths and English and science, my brain found it really difficult to be in those positions. But when you put me in something more practical, like cooking and building and like sport, I just loved it. So I definitely had like a love-hate relationship with school. I, I didn't always want to be there, but I also felt like it was like a fun place to be, you know, and I had great relationships with my teachers and, you know, my fellow friends and stuff. But I suppose it was just like somewhere I could forget about my worries, really, and just like run around and be a kid. And I don't think I was an unhappy child, but I was definitely a stressed, anxious child, I think. I just remember being like at school and not feeling like I could talk about what was going on in my life because things like police knocking on the door the night before or my mum and dad having a big fight or, you know, my dad using drugs. So I was so worried that they were going to take me away from my parents. So it was like I knew what was going on, but I wasn't told. It was like kind of kept under the under the surface, like swept under the, under the rug. But really, I needed someone just to say to me, like, what's going on? Because it... It kind of, I acted up and my behavior wasn't great. I was disruptive, basically an attention seeking class clown. I feel like I was a kind boy, but I was seen that as the naughty boy. I was just sort of like cast off as the naughty kid that wouldn't sit still and disrupted everything. But really it was just my way of trying to get attention and someone to speak to me. I definitely don't think I had anyone I could talk to other than my mum probably and my dad at the time, because it was like, it was family chaos that I thought if I told anybody in the public or anyone at school, they could, you know, social service could come and I inspect our house and take take me away from my mum and dad. So we just didn't talk about it. I knew my dad was an addict, but yeah, it was something that, you know, we just can't talk about at school. So, you know, in hindsight, that probably affected my relationships with people around me, my behaviour. So I think talking and having that open dialogue with anybody you can is really powerful. So me and my brother got separated at school. Like we went to the same primary school, but when it came to secondary school, because I was the naughty one and Nicky was sort of the really well-behaved one, they said that if I went to the same secondary school, I was going to always live in his shadows and I would, I would act up and become even naughtier. So it was something I was really angry about. I didn't want that to happen, but my mum said that I think this is the best thing. And it was because I got to start fresh with my own sort of like friendship group, my own personality, I could start fresh. So it was difficult. But yeah, my brother Nick has always been my, you know, my guardian angel, always looked after me. But I don't remember sort of talking to him openly as kids because he was quite introvert. He bottled things up. Whereas I would speak my mind, like I would say if I was upset or angry at my dad, I would shout and swear and I'd be like vocal. Whereas Nikki much more was withdrawn and internalised it. So I think, yeah, the fact that I was quite loud and shouty and I, I could release some of that meant that I didn't truly become sad and depressed because I knew if I wanted to vent, I could shout and scream or if I wanted to exercise, I could release some of that stress in my body. But yeah, I definitely think my brother's been an important part in that, you know, just because we went through the same experiences really, you know, it's been important person to have alongside that journey. The older I get, the wiser I get and the more compassionate I get. 
So now I understand my dad's addiction. I understand my mum's mental health issues. And it makes me feel sad that I didn't have the conversations earlier because I would have had a much smoother transition like through teenage years if I understood addiction and I could have more compassion. But um, yeah, I'm now very vocal. I talk to my wife, talk to my mum and dad, and I challenge them. I say, well, why did you do that? Or what was that all about? And I could go into the history a little bit more to, to understand them a bit more. And there's just so much power in talking and like releasing those feelings from your mind and body because you hold it, you hold it in your stomach, in your heart, in your mind, you know, all the stress and tension. It can be physical as well. So I think the more you talk about it, the lighter that, that backpack gets, the more you exercise, the lighter that backpack gets. And it might, the weight might come back and the thoughts and negative emotions, the trauma is always there, but it's learning to use tools and coping mechanisms. And I really believe in, you know, looking at your sleep, your nutrition, your exercise, you know, these are things that can really fundamentally change how you feel. But alongside that, if you can do all those things and communicate openly with family and friends, then you're going to really navigate through life a lot easier. And also, like, I reach out to my friends and say, how are you doing? How's your mental health? I say, look, how's your mental health? I say it to my dad. And they always go, oh, yeah, not bad, okay. And I, and I ask again, I always probe a little bit more because I always think people just say, yeah, I'm fine, everything's good. But I say, are you sure? Because I haven't spoke to you for a few weeks. I know you've gone quiet and I can, know, I, I can tell that's you having a tough time. Um, so, yeah, I always ask the question and I say, look, you don't need to feel like you're a burden by talking about your problems. Actually, I'm here to listen. I care about you. Even if it's a nice little watch that message or voice note, just let them know you're thinking about them. It's really powerful, I think. One of the things I think I've really like learned to kind of get better at is listening because I used to be a bit of a talker. I'd, I'd listen, but I'd want to share my advice and talk. And I, I'm really now, so, like, as I'm listening to someone who's struggling, I say, just listen, Joe, listen. Because sometimes you interrupt someone and you sort of answer for them, but I'm learning to listen more. And I think that's a really important skill because sometimes you just let them just say what they need to say. You don't need to give them an answer or solution. And just, just being a good listener is a really lovely thing to do. So I've got very young children. I've got a five-year-old, a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And I still think it's so important to bring them into the conversation. And I often say, you know, daddy's a little bit stressed out today. I'm just going to go and do some exercise. Do you want to come with me? Or should we do some pad work? We do the boxing and stuff. And it's just showing them that actually we can feel stress. We can feel down. It's okay. But it's like learning to deal with those emotions and regulate that a little bit. And with role modeling, you know, they learn from us. So I think trying to talk about things, you know, what are you grateful for? What are you happy for today? What are you grateful for? What made you feel sad or stressed? Or when they're arguing, which is all the time, I try to get them to resolve it themselves. Like talk about things, understand, you know, what you're trying to achieve. And then maybe you can share a little bit better or you can give each other an opportunity to try something yourselves. It's just little things. It's little emotional regulation things that really help them as characters and individuals learn to like deal with stress i think children now are under more pressure than ever with you know the opinions of millions of people on social media and this kind of external view of the world that like we're not looking inside and i always say like happiness is an inside job you have to look inside and look after your sleep and your health and your you know your nutrition because what you see on social media and in the world it's like it's not really reality of most people's lives i think it's harder now being a teenager probably you as was has ever been to be honest I think this campaign with a backpack is incredible. It's so clever. It's so, you know, it's so relevant and important right now because young children are really facing a lot of trouble, a lot of stress, a lot of mental health issues on the rise. And so this visualised representation of what it's like for young children to be carrying something all the time is going to open up great conversations and get people talking more. And I think it's an amazing initiative that, you know, will help young people acknowledge their backpack know it's there and learn about strategies and tools and have coping mechanisms to lighten the load and to, to live a happier life. I think it's wonderful. And that's why I'm backing the BBC Children in Need Heaviest Backpack Campaign.